This video is for any parents or grandparents that have dogs in the household. What sparked this is I saw a Facebook post recently, a lady had put up that their 12 week old puppy um, was growling at their child for cuddling it. And the blame was very much on the dog. Um, how dare they growl at my child because my child wants to cuddle it. And actually from my point of view, the blame should be on the child and it's about educating the child how to interact with a puppy or dog appropriately and picking up on the dog's body language communication signals. That growling is clearly saying, mm, I don't really feel comfortable with you handling me like this. Please, please get away. And the thing is, if we don't adhere to that communication, please get away, that growl could turn into bite. And so a lot of issues with children and dogs can be prevented by just educating the children appropriate interaction with the dog. So a couple of easy things to teach kids. Number one, avoid cuddling. Despite us wanting to cuddle dogs, it's a kind of natural human mammal thing, isn't it? We like cuddling, most of us. Um, dogs actually don't particularly start off enjoying it. It's, uh, it's restraint, isn't it? Um, and they learn to kind of maybe tolerate it over time and maybe some do enjoy it. But I remember getting Bear when he was little, my nieces were young at the time, constantly cuddling him. And I could I sat there feeling really sorry for him going, oh, I know you're not really enjoying this, mate. He tolerated it. Um, but again, it was an opportunity for me to say to them, look guys, can you see Bear sort of backing away a little bit there? That just means that he needs a little bit of space. Um, carrying, especially with the smaller, <laughs> smaller breeds, there is temptation to carry them everywhere. Um, <laughs> but that's not the way dogs should be transported. They have four legs, they um, like to use them. So yeah, just avoid children carrying puppies everywhere. Um, running around, so kids, you know, they come home from school, they might be excited, they're seeing the puppy and they're running around. Obviously, that's gonna get the dog really, really excited. And for young dogs, they might lack a little bit of self-control. So that's where you can they very easily become a little frenzy. And that's where the biting and nipping will kick in. Screaming. So I had to teach my nieces, inner voice guys, right? Because if you're screaming, the dog's biting you and you're going, ah! The dog doesn't realize you're not enjoying that interaction. They think you are one big squeaking dog toy. So please, in a voice, avoid screaming. Avoid bothering the dog when they're sleeping. I am not a morning person by any stretch of the imagination. And if you started prodding me around at 6am in the morning, I'd be a little bit grumpy. So it's really important we educate the children, don't bother the dog when they're sleeping and have that separate area behind a baby gate in a crate where the dog can just take themselves off, have some alone time and get plenty of rest. Clear the area. So if the children want a bit of playtime with some toys, don't have the dog in the same environment. You know, we can't expect the dog to know this is a children's toy and this is a dog toy. So if the kids want playtime, separate areas. The main thing parents and grandparents can do with children and dogs is really try to educate the child where possible on how to interact with the dog appropriately. Um, how to read the dog's body language. Does the dog want space? Supervision. You know, I feel a little bit condescending patronizing saying this, but you'd be surprised. Like I had some uh, owners and they thought it was fine to leave their three-year-old and 12-week-old puppy alone together. Like that is not appropriate. That is setting both parties up for failure. Dogs and children need supervision all the time. And if you can't do that, have the dog in a crate in a different area. You know, it only takes a child kind of scrunching the dog the wrong way and then the, the dog could rightfully react because they've been hurt. So you really need to make sure um, they're supervised at all times. There's a really great infographic that I'll put on the website and socials, and it's a really easy visual learning tool that you can sit down with your children um, and teach them about appropriate interaction um, and some dog body language.